This 2014 Games coverage is brought to you by Fringe Sport. Welcome to the RX Views coverage of the 2014 CrossFit Games. I'm John and I'm joined by Michael at the StubHub Centre at the end of competition. The tractors are here, the uh, forklifts are in, they're cleaning up the StubHub Centre for what's been a very eventful week of competition, Michael. Yeah, John, absolutely one of the most amazing competitions that I've seen in the last few years that I've been out here. The crowds were phenomenal. I said that last year, I'm saying it again this year. I mean, there was only standing room, the eyes were, the eyes were full, I can't even talk. Um, but um, I was very impressed with the level of competition and the amount of people that were out here. Yeah, now I've been here for the last three years, I think almost four years actually, and I've seen the crowds grow phenomenally. I thought last year probably couldn't get any bigger. What I'm seeing now, Michael, is lines at 10 o'clock in the morning of people lining up to get into the tennis centre. I mean, we used to walk from here to there and there was no line, but now there's people lining up from the morning to get prime time seats at the tennis stadium. Not only was that the case, I mean, we were out of Vendor City the other day. I saw a line for Sam Briggs that was literally 150 metres long just to get an autograph from her. So, I mean, not only were the people paying attention to the athletes this year, they were paying attention to last year's champion. So, it's very exciting. I mean, what I did also notice, and I mentioned this previously, was that Last year, I did notice there were like little fans running around getting autographs of Jason Kalipa, like, um, and that was that was interesting. But this year, people were like in full out kit with Annie Thoris sort of t-shirts, with Julie Fusay t-shirts, and I think that's where there's been a bit of a change in the sport. The spectators here are real spectators, and I think the sport is really taking off. And from a journalistic or reporting side point of view, I found it quite tough to get interviews as well this year. I think uh, it just shows that these guys are becoming real celebrities in the community. Well, now let's get down to the competition because what a week it was. Uh, unlike last year and the years before that we had Rich Froning flying apart, flying ahead and pretty much securing victory before the final workout. This year, well, it was an absolute tight battle in the men's half. Yeah, he started off extremely strong, the best Rich has ever done. I mean, did phenomenal in the swim and then all of a sudden dropped down the rankings but yep. was able to pull himself back in the end and show why he is the four-time champion. Yeah, now let's talk about some other people that, that placed uh, well, fairly well in the, in the men's half. Matt Fraser, the rookie. I think in his very first year of CrossFit, well, you don't want to talk about Matt Fraser, huh? You don't know about Matt Fraser? Don't know anything about rookies? Okay, Apparently Megan. Not. Megan's getting tagged in. Megan Drapowski. Uh, can you talk about Matt Fraser and his performance this week? Uh, Matt Fraser performed absolutely phenomenally well uh, on event two, the overhead squat. He tied first with the champion, Rich Froning, and he just continued to perform well from there, including second place finishes on the last day on midline march and on thick and quick. Well, this, this girl knows more than you, Michael. Our, uh, she, she does run our social media at the moment, so uh, she probably knows a bit more than Michael when it comes to statistics. Thank you, Megan. Now, look, uh, let's move to the females half, though. Um, Annie Thoris started returning from injury. Julie Fouché back from a year off as well. They were the big guns heading into this, but Camille leblanc Bazinet, I wouldn't say it's an upset, but she did claim victory. Were you surprised? A little bit surprised in saying that a lot of these workouts were gymnastic style movements. There wasn't a lot of phenomenally heavy weight. So I think this year, if there was a year that she could have won it, it was going to be this year. I don't necessarily know if, if the workouts were similar to last year that she would have taken champion. Although you can't take anything away from her at this stage because she did prove she was the fittest over these last few days. Yeah, and just like the men's uh, division, it was quite quite close as well. I think leading to the final workout, anyone was a chance of winning. I think at one stage there was maybe 15 points separating six contenders. So uh, one athlete in particular, which I was unfortunate to see, um, was Cara Webb. Uh, she was sitting in second place, in first place for most of the week. Unfortunately injured her hand, or uh, I don't know when she injured it, but it was during the... Um, the event, the first event of the day in the final workout out here, the um, the uh, handstand walk, I think it was, when she hurt her, her hand. It appears that uh, she might have done some real damage to her wrist and she had to withdraw for the final uh, workout, which was which is quite a shame. Big shame. I mean, the big dub, I mean, was one, one of my personal favorites, actually. I thought there was, a, there was a good chance, especially with that clean ladder at the end there, that she would have actually come up in the, in the rankings. And I really do think she could have taken that top title. Let's see what happens next year. Well, talking about next year, Michael, it's going to be a very, very interesting year of CrossFit for both men and females in particular. The bottom line is that we're seeing the changing of the guard in the men's half. We're seeing Rich Froning and Jason Khalifa have both announced they're going team next year. That is if the team qualifies, that is. Which means really it's, it's opened the door for a whole bunch of new uh, male athletes to, to, to claim the fittest man on, on earth title. In the female half, though, we're seeing the returning of the guard. Sam Briggs wasn't here this year. Lindsay Valenzuela wasn't here this year. Julie Fouché's return and Annie Thoris has returned in fine style. So it seems like the females division is going to be, as, as I just said then, the, the return of the old guard. Yeah, absolutely, John. I mean, that was that was very interesting. I mean, the fact that these two ladies, Thoris Sauter and Fouché, took you know last year off and were able to come back and still get on that podium is absolutely phenomenal. Next year is going to be a real competition, though, because, I mean, if Cara Webb is able to come back, it's really going to play out. Jeez, they are getting loud out there. They really want us out here. 
If Julie Boucher and Thoris Otter are there and Big Dub Cara Webb is there, it's really going to be an exciting competition. Froning, like you said, is going to be out of the competition, so is Khalifa. And I did hear that supposedly when Froning was walking off the actual arena, he walked over and shook Noah Olsen's hand and said, it's all yours for next year. So, final question for you, Michael. Whose performance were you actually impressed with this weekend? Because <laughs> it seems like you're very critical of everyone. There, there was two people in particular. I'm going to say Cara Webb. I was phenomenally impressed with her. She proved that, you know, given the right conditions, that she is actually a force to be reckoned with. Take, take away that injury, and I really do believe that there was a good chance that she could quite have possibly been the fittest woman on the planet. Again, I'm going to turn to Annie Thorisorda. Thorisorda coming back from, the, from that injury with a, the two slip discs in her back, that was absolutely phenomenal. Most people are, are out for two to three years with an injury like that, and she was able to come back and not only do well, but take podium. So I'm going to be interested to see what she's able to do next year. Yeah, Annie Thorisorda did break down in tears uh, in, the, in the press conference uh, tonight after uh, being crowned the second finest woman on earth. Uh, it just shows you um, what an achievement it was for her to get back on the global stage and finish second at the CrossFit Games. I mean, I've had that same injury as her, and I'm, uh, I'm getting back to playing football, but not to the level of what she's doing. So that's a phenomenal comeback by her, and I can seriously see where she's coming from. But for me, I think Tommy Hackerbrook was uh, my most impressive performance this week. He's been one of the great performers over the past three years. Showed everyone today and over the week that he really is a class performer, not just a team affiliate captain on some of the performers on the team division, but he also performs well in the individual uh, division as well. So that about wraps up our uh, coverage of the 2014 CrossFit game. Make sure you check out our website for all the latest videos and updates. And uh, Steve, I would like to call in David Cousins, our cameraman, and Mika Dupowski, as we do every year. And one last we time. actually have a few other people on the team this year who are not with us because they're out buying us beers. So, um, Reebok 2014 CrossFit Games, this is the RS of you minus two people. I'd like to thank you and catch you next year, John. We're out. See you guys. <laughs>